A Brooklyn Tale, Part 11. Okay, so when we were like, you know, 16, 17 years old, me and my buddy Joey from Brooklyn, we were big into jazz. We used to go into Manhattan, whatever, take the train. We used to go to all the jazz clubs, everything. Sweet Basils, Visions, you name it. We went everywhere, okay? Blue Note once in a while, but that was expensive, Blue Note. It's easier to go to, to you know, Sweet Basils was reasonable. So anyway, long story, but not this night. This night it wasn't reasonable. <laughs> we went to go see Marvin Smitty Smith. I think he had like a quintet. He was a piano player, bass player. He's on drums. And he had a saxophone and a trumpet player. I mean, just absolutely amazing music. Marvin Smitty Smith, one of the greatest jazz drummers ever, right? So Joey says, my friend, I'm going to buy the band around the drinks. So I'm like, bro, I mean, you have the money for this. I don't have the money. I got like 20 bucks on to my name, you know? He goes, don't ask any questions. All right, don't worry about nothing. I got it under control. Gabish. I'm like, all right. So, you know. So he buys them around the drinks. They finish their drinks. You know, salud, gentani. You know what I mean? My friend Joe orders another round for them. He goes, he goes, bartender, give them a second round. All right. And they're all like, oh, hey, thank you very much. You're the best. Don't worry about gentani, salud. I mean, I'm like, this guy's out of his mind. I'm like, Joe, you have enough money for all this? He's like, yeah. So Marvin Smitty Smith, the drummer, was so impressed. He actually sat down with us. Okay, and he gave Joey an autograph. He wrote this whole thing on how cool he was. Still to this day, my buddy has his autograph. He has all this. And long story short, my friend Joe goes, Marvin, let me ask you a question. Are you hungry? And he's like, yeah, I can eat. You know, he's like, what do you, what do you like, steak? He goes, oh, my God. He's like, he, he tells about, get, get, get Marvin a porterhouse steak. Now, I'm starving. I only got $20 on me. I wanted a porterhouse steak. <laughs> I'm thinking, I was about to ask my friend, you're buying everybody food, buy me food, right? But I didn't say nothing, okay. So he buys a mistake. All right. And then, whatever. they go. He goes back, he plays his next set. Do me a favor, give them one last round. And they're like, oh, we can't accept it. Oh, he says, ah. It's on the house. Just like out of the movie, you know. Just out of Goodfellas. It's on, no, no, no. It's on the house, okay. So, long story short, the check comes. We get the check. It's like $300. I pull out 20 bucks. I go, Joe, yeah, whatever I get, you know, whatever this will do to help you out, brother, right? He pulls out $10. He throws it on the table. He goes, let's go. I'm like this. Whoa. I said, bro, you're joking, right? Tell me you're joking right now. Tell me this is a joke. He goes, no, no, they know me. here. I come here all the time. I'll tell the guy to put it on my tip. I'm like, bro, they're not going to put it. He's like, don't worry about it. I'm like, bro. He goes to the bartender. And he's like, you know, can I have a tab here? You know me. I come here all the time. The guy goes, no, absolutely not. So I'm like, we're in a lot of trouble. There's this big Russian guy. I think his name was Vladimir or something. He's like this big guy. He's about like maybe 400 pounds. He was almost seven feet. And like I saw the bartender like look look at him like, you know, like this. Look. Meaning don't let us leave. <laughs> You understand? I'm like, bro, we're going to get killed. So I just went to the, the bartender. I said, listen, I said, uh, my, my friend made a major mistake here. Let me call my father. Let me call him. Can I use your phone? There was no cell phones back then. So the bartender let me use uh, his phone. I just dropped a, no big deal. Lice bottle here. How you doing? Just found the floor. No big deal. Um, I called my father. He was a fire dispatcher. And he was working, <laughs> you know. I said, Dad, we got a little bit of a problem here. He goes, what did you do? What did you do? I said, my, my Joey went nuts, Dad. I said, he, bought, he bought everybody at the jazz club a drink. <laughs> he bought them steak. He's like, how much is the bill? I mean, it's $300. $300! Thank God. Anyway, my father, may he rest in peace. He saved the day. He came down. He paid the bill. He tipped everybody. Uh, that's a Brooklyn tale. <laughs> and I call it Brooklyn because we're the stew dots from Brooklyn that did this. <laughs>